Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Hey, great to be with you today. We're in verse 11, Ezra chapter 6. Verse 11, Ezra chapter... You'll like this. This is just... This is just priceless. It is priceless. So, as you know, um, Darius has discovered the scroll and... um, He's given word back to these bad guys, Tatanai and Shethar Bozanai and all their associates, all their governors. And he's like, hey, cut cut it out, right? Just, just cut it out. Cut out your nonsense. Found the scroll. Leave them alone. Um, let them do the work. And then not only that, as you read verses 8 to 10, what you discover is... Um, not not only are you going to let them rebuild on the site, but we're going to be providing. He's like, I'm making a decree for all that you will do for these elders. This is just so good. And I'll just give you the synopsis here. He's like, you're going to provide the bulls, the rams, the sheep for the burnt offerings. You're going to provide the wheat, the salt, the wine, the oil, everything that they require. So this is just like these bad guys. The whole thing flips around on them, kind of like kind of like Haman, you know, when he had come against Esther. Um, and this, that, by the way, is also very, very close to this time frame. But not only that, right? Not only does he say, hey, listen, y'all, not, not only are you going to let them do it, but you're going you're gonna to supply for them. You're going to, out of your own stores. But he says in verse 11, also I make a decree that if anyone alters this edict, a beam shall be pulled out of his house and he shall be impaled on it. And his house shall be made a dunghill. May the God who has caused his name to dwell there overthrow any king or people who shall put out a hand to alter this or to destroy this house of God that is in Jerusalem. I, Darius, make a decree. Let it be done with all diligence. So, I mean, it's just a classic threat, you know, and I just, it's so interesting. Hey, by the way, if you don't do it, uh, we're going to pull a beam out of your house and we're going to impale you on it. Like, you know, and then we're going to take your house and we're going to back up a dump truck and we're going to put cow dung all over your home. Like, I mean, if that doesn't get your attention, right, if that does not get your attention and it just begs the question, man, why the, why the ferocity, why the intensity, why the determination to make it clear um, that you will do this or else? And I think the answer to that is given in verse 12 when he says, May the God who has caused his name to dwell there overthrow any king or people who shall put out a hand to alter this. I think that, I think Darius was no fool when it came to history. You know, I think that he knew what the score was because, because he was paying attention. You know, these, these kings were not idiots. They were wise individuals. Um, they weren't just disruptors. They didn't just roll into a scene and try to execute or fulfill their agenda. I mean, for the most part. Some certainly were. Um, but some were really wise. Some of them, they understood they, that they needed to have um, a very solid understanding of history particularly of the nations that they were taking over, um, they needed to be well aware of the terrain, right? They needed to get a handle on the landscape before they were ever able to really um, rule in a way that was not just wise, but was successful. By the way, I just want to encourage you in any leadership setting, when you're, when you're stepping into something new, um, what you don't do is just come in with all your bright ideas and start, you know, um, executing all of the ideas that you have in your mind. The way you the way you begin is by listening and paying attention and understanding the terrain and understanding the people that you're going to be leading and dealing with. And then, as that happens, you have a you have a change management plan, you know that you have worked out and you bring that change incrementally, not forcing it down people's throats, but but establishing buy-in. Um, and I think that Darius was that guy. And so I'm saying all that to say, like he knew what happened with Nebuchadnezzar. He was well aware of it. He knew what happened um, with, with Belshazzar. 
he understood that there was that moment, the writing on the, on the wall, that the, the Medes and the Persians conquered the city of Babylon because this little upstart wayward snot, you know, was unwilling to give any um, deference to the God of Israel. There was the handwriting on the wall. He understood what happened with Cyrus and, and the work of God in Cyrus's life, um, what had been decreed by Nebuchadnezzar. He understood that the God of the Israelites was not to be trifled with. He understood that because, and I don't know if this is before or after, um, but in his own life, he would experience the power of God through Daniel's life and, and Daniel being rescued from the lion's den and him learning that the God of the Israelites can send his angel at any time to execute uh, the fullness of his will. And so, you know, I, I guess I say all that to say that there was a healthy fear of God in his heart and... Um, it's good. It's good for us as we consider our history, you know, as we think about God's dealings with the nation of Israel and the church over the centuries and the church in our own country. And, you know, as we consider the work of God, it's, it should produce within us a, a wisdom, you know, a wisdom on how we, how we comport ourselves, how we handle our lives, you know, how we see other people and and the dealings that we have with the people of God and, and, and how we use God's name. I wanna just encourage you to learn from his example. You know, learn from, not, not the, I'm gonna pull a beam from your house and impale you on it kind of like, <laughs> not that lesson, but the lesson that, man, God is not to be trifled with and, and we need to have a sobriety when it comes to who it is that we worship. Father, thank you for your word and, and help us, God, help us all. Help us all to live with the fear of the Lord. Your word says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And God, I hear that word today in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.